You are listening to a Blazing Caribou Studios production. Please welcome Petey the Sexual Harassment Panda. Who lives in the beast before the sexual harassment? Panda who explains sexual harassment to you and me. Sexual harassment. Panda, don't say that. Don't touch there. Don't be nasty, says the silly bear. He's going to tell you what's right and wrong. Sexual harassment. Panda. Hi, boys and girls. <laughs> oh, boy. And welcome back to the Varmints Podcast, where every week we do a whole bunch of research to educate ourselves and you, the listener, on all things that creep, crawl, slither, fly, jump, hop, and swim on this planet, one animal at a time. My name's Paul, I'm your co-host, and I am not an animal expert. Hello, Paul. All right. Uh, nice beginning there. Hello all the var- to all the Varmints <laughs> out there. Uh, my name is also Paul, definitely not an animal expert. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about an animal that, uh, kind of in contrast to a recent episode about foxes who are kind of everywhere, this animal, sort of as a result of human uh, development, has become really restricted to a very small area of the world. Right, it's almost almost nowhere. Mm-hmm. And uh, that, that animal, as you heard, is the panda. <laughs> so, let's get right into it. The kingdom of animals is fascinating. Now I'm going to tell you about their behavior and living pattern. So come on! What in God's holy name are you blathering about? We're blathering about pandas this week. I think everybody should know, everybody above the age of four years old should know what a panda is. <laughs> yeah, I it's mean, a, it's, yeah, that's kind of interesting too because uh, there's very few pandas in the world, but it seems like everyone kind of you know knows what a panda is. Everyone has like a panda bear stuffed animal or something like that in their life you know so yeah and technically they're called a great panda but right. i think just for the purposes of this podcast because we're you know just a couple of regular guys we're just gonna <laughs> we're, we're just gonna call them either panda or panda bear that's all right paul you can call me dumb <laughs> <laughs> i'm right there with you <laughs> we're not animal experts right and the panda is indeed a bear. It's classified as a bear. Uh, people didn't know for a while if the panda was a bear or a type of raccoon. Yeah, they actually used to call it a bear cat. Uh, in a lot of languages, the words uh, that they used to describe a panda is actually still something along the lines of bear cat or cat bear or something like that. And uh, But yeah, yeah. so the, the red red panda definitely looks like a, uh, a raccoon a, a lot, but uh, that's kind of not really what I looked into much this week so i'm assuming we're just going to talk about giant pandas right (laughs) we're just going to talk about great pandas yeah and actually the confusion came about because there was a french scientist a while back that and by a while back i mean like 120 years ago right right he found the remains of a dead great panda and he, he thought it was a giant raccoon right but now that they know how to do like genetic testing uh they know that the panda is in fact a bear Right, and they know that the the red panda and the great or giant panda aren't very closely related to each other, actually. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Great big bear, black and white, big black spots around its eyes. It has a it, very it, unique look, and and you kind of got to wonder, like, how does that look uh, with the black patches and white fur, other than the black patches, how does that kind of help them in the wild? Like, how did they evolve to look like that? Scientists think that they're black and white so that on the side of a snowy mountain, they can kind of blend in and camouflage, although they really don't have any, other than people, they don't have any natural predators. They don't have anything to really worry about. Well, with the exception of, like, your odd, like, uh, jaguar or something that could could attack them and kill them. They're not, like, direct predators. It's just sort of, because they could easily kill a jaguar, but they, it's not a 100% safe for them out there. But, yeah, they don't have any, like, people above them on the food chain or anything. One thing that is kind of cool about great pandas is they have what are called pseudo thumbs. Right, right. They, yeah, it's kind of crazy looking too because they they have uh, five fingers, right, and then they have the the thumb thing. So it looks like almost like they have like an extra finger or something like that, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. I actually knew a kid who had an extra pinky. Oh, that's interesting. I've never actually had, met someone with uh, an extra digit. He had an extra pinky on each hand. He was real. He was very, very young. He was like six years old. 
and I think he got them removed because they didn't do anything. Right. And um, people probably thought it looked weird or something, like, and made fun oh, of him yeah. or something, yeah. I think they got rid of his fingers, like, before he went to school so that he could avoid any kind of, you know, terrible right. yeah. inbreeding jokes or anything like that. Yeah, you know how terrible kids can be in school, so I, I, don't, I don't blame him. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they they use them to uh, eat bamboo. Right. So if you like, if you look at the palm of your hand, okay, and imagine I'm that at the palm of my hand. Okay, imagine right. that you're wearing a glove. It's winter time now, so you pre- you probably have a couple of pairs of gloves, right? Yeah, up here in Chicago, we got about uh, six inches of snow on the ground right now. How's it going in Florida? Uh, it's like eighty. <laughs> All right. All right. I, I regret asking actually, because now I, now I'm jealous. All right. So I'm wearing my mittens. Okay. Yeah. Well, imagine that you're wearing gloves and okay. you're, you you have the, your fingers in the finger holes, but you don't have a thumb hole. Okay. Well, that sucks. Okay. Yeah. But but the but the palm of your glove, where your hand is, is wide enough to where you can still move your thumb around and you can still kind of bend it in toward your the palm of your hand. Ah. Okay. I got you. That's kind of how a panda's paw works. No. Yeah, that's kind of weird. <laughs> yep, and the only thing, like, imagine the only thing visible is, like, your thumbprint and your thumbnail. I guess, uh, however <laughs> however you could get your food, man, even if you have a bone that can move around underneath the skin like that or whatever, that's kind of creepy. It helps them to eat bamboo. Yeah, so they definitely do like bamboo. Uh, actually, almost the entirety of their diet, except for baby pandas, which, you know, drink their mother's milk, their entire diet is almost entirely bamboo. The thing about bamboo is is that it's not really rich in nutrients. So you have to eat a whole ton of bamboo to actually get <laughs> uh, nutrients out of it. And when I say a ton, it's obviously an exaggeration because they really only eat about 30 pounds a day at, at the most. <laughs> That's still a lot. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, uh, I mean, if you, you, you think about that quarter pound cheeseburger you ate for lunch that you're kind of regretting right now, that, that's only a quarter of <laughs> a pound, right? So, you know, 30... 30 pounds of that would be quite a bit of food. So, I ate a Five Guys cheeseburger last week, and it still <laughs> feels like it's in me. Yeah, exactly. So uh, so you, you can imagine, though, that they're basically just constantly eating uh, in order to get through that 30 pounds of bamboo every day. The thing is, is they, they have a specialized uh, digestive tract that helps them out in, that, uh, in getting nutrients from all that bamboo, right? It's a really sort of short and straight digestive tract, which... Uh, allows them to quickly digest the stuff that they can digest and get rid of the stuff that they can't digest. And do they ever? Yeah, so as a result, they poop a lot. They poop like, what, like 40 times a day or something like that. Yeah, I saw between 40 and 60 times a day. Yeah, so they, they, they're they just always crapping. <laughs> <laughs> you could not get anything done. If you had a bad night the night before and you went to work and you were in the bathroom like five times that day you're having a bad day that's a really bad day uh you you know it's actually kind of interesting uh a lot of uh panda's life revolves around its poop because it's always pooping but if you think (laughs) about uh what pandas do when uh, a baby panda is born the mother panda actually has to uh every two hours or so massage the panda's stomach area so that it's able to poop because it's uh digestive system isn't like the muscles aren't really well developed so they, they have to help them poop um, oh my! Yeah, and the reason why actually people were able to figure that out was because uh, pandas that were in captivity would die. Well, the reason why they die is because the mother panda always chooses the strongest baby if it has because it usually has twins, and it chooses the strongest baby and has to pay so much attention to that baby that the other baby just dies. So in captivity, they take the weaker baby and they try to raise it, and forever, like these babies were just dying. And, like, the uh, people that were taking care of the pandas couldn't figure out why. And it turned out that after observing the mother panda massaging the uh, bowels of the younger panda, that that was the reason why, is they weren't getting rid of their excrement because they didn't have strong enough muscles. Oh, wow. I did not know that. Yeah. And another weird thing, too, is that they're born with sterile uh, digestive tracts. So there's no bacteria to aid in in the uh, process of digesting their food. So what they have to do is eat a little bit of mom's poop in order to nice. get Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so, so pandas, they eat poop. Okay. <laughs> we, we're going to knock a half point off their intelligence yeah, 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 for later yeah, yeah. on. Yeah, I did put, not know that. Put a tick mark there. <laughs>
Can you imagine if you like just ate 30 pounds of corn every single day? Oh, no, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Unless you're in a very, 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 very small part of China mm -hmm. that is not covered in iPad factories. <laughs> oh. oh, dude, that's racist or nationalist <laughs> or something. Is it? I don't know. Isn't it? Don't they make all the all the iPads there? They like, do, they do, but I mean, I don't okay. know. <laughs> Maybe I'll edit that out. Maybe I won't. Uh, well, I mean, it, it's it's the truth though. It's a sad truth that you know, in uh, China, they have a lot of underpaid workers that make a lot of electronics that we use in the United States. Well, and that's part of the problem for pandas, right? Is all right. the uh, the human encroachment means that their their territory is very very small now right exactly they're uh mostly restricted to the what is it the Sich sichuan region sure I i'll go with how, it i don't know how to say that word but it's that uh, works for me it's a specific region yeah they used to range all the way from beijing to the himalaya mountains and now they're just in this one little pocket in china central china so unless you happen to be there looking out for pandas you're gonna probably if you see a panda live Right in front of you, it's going to be in a zoo. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. And in the United States, there are four zoos in Atlanta, Washington, D.C., San Diego, and Memphis, Tennessee that have giant pandas. Right. So I do know that uh, China doesn't typically anymore, at least, um, they don't like uh, export their pandas. They only loan them out for periods of 10 years. They used to give them as uh, diplomatic gifts, but they don't any longer. So, uh, do you happen to know, are those pandas on loan from China, or are those ones that we happen to breed here after receiving a gift from China? Oh, no, they're all owned by China. They're okay. all uh, rental pandas, if you will. Yeah, yeah. Each American zoo pays $1 million per year per panda to China as yeah. part of that 10-year contract. The World uh, Wildlife Fund, I think, or one of those organizations, requires also that you have to ensure that the Chinese government uses at least half of that fund um, on the preservation of, of pandas. And they say that they do, but at the same time, the World Wildlife Fund isn't really getting any receipts. Yeah. So they don't know for <laughs> sure. Yeah. I would say, though, there, there is some evidence that they have been using the so at least a good portion of the funds because the, they're now called a uh, conservation reliant vulnerable species as opposed to the more severe threatened status i can't remember exactly endangered, endangered thank you i don't know why i couldn't remember that word Paul. <laughs> i had a total brain fart they're coming back a little bit in the wild right they, they've gone from like 16 to eighteen thousand or 2000 or something like that there, there's no like r real reliable numbers but yeah sorry for yeah. that sidetrack though oh no that's yeah. fine yeah but, um, yeah, that's why if you go to a zoo and they have giant pandas there, it's you're probably going to be paying a lot for the ticket to that zoo. In yeah. fact, the San Diego Zoo is the most expensive zoo in the United States. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you think about it, there's only 2,000 pandas in the world, maybe. Like, you, you got one of them at your zoo. That's that's pretty pretty cool to, to have, though. So, like, I would I would say it's probably worth the money to get into the, to the zoo to see a, to see a panda live. Probably is yeah. They're still losing money on that because they're it's they're paying a million dollars a year per panda. They have to feed the thing bamboo, so they have to get the bamboo from right. somewhere. And if by chance they have two pandas, which now they're paying two million dollars a year for, mm -hmm. and those pandas have a baby, China owns that baby as well, and there's like a six hundred thousand dollar fee for that baby. Right, I know. And China uh... can just take it right back. I mean, I guess that makes sense too, because it's like. Uh... The, the pandas kind of become a symbol for for China. Uh, they they like it, when they had the Olympics. They the fuwa that they had was one of them was a panda, or maybe all of them were pandas or something like that. So it's sort of like an international symbol for China. So yeah, uh, they're just kind of protecting their indigenous species. Also, uh, pandas uh, they look big and cuddly and nice, but they will mess you up. Yeah, so so they're typically pretty shy. So in in general, they're not gonna start some stuff but when they do if you irritate them they'll just come at you and like any bear they can maul you 
Oh, yeah, there's a couple of videos on YouTube. Um, one of them is a guy, and it just happened like maybe a year ago, maybe less than a year ago. Mm-hmm. I don't know where he, where in the world he was. Maybe it was China. Uh, <laughs> hopped, the, hopped the fence over into the panda enclosure and decided that he was going to play with the panda, and uh, it did not turn out well for him. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to get in the way of their stuff, man. They like That's like... Uh... It's a bear. Yeah, it's a bear. Like, don't just because it looks cute doesn't mean you can go and mess with it, dude. You just like exactly stay away. Uh, do you have anything else on uh, any other facts or figures on pandas? No, I just uh, remember to mark your checkbox for they eat poop. <laughs> Duly noted. <laughs> All right, let's get into pop culture. But before we do that, a word from this sponsor. This is Phil. And this is Carrie. And we're hosting this cool podcast called Brokebot Mountain, a Westworld fan cast, all based on the HBO series Westworld. We had to do something. We were talking about it so much. We needed a venue for our crazy show theories. Yeah, not to mention your fanaticism, and I'm using that word lightly for Thandy Newton. Should we mention your less than healthy obsession with James Marsden? Shut up, Phil. Shutting up. So download us each week on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and SoundCloud, and listen to us beyond the range of possibilities. You know, whether they're the ones actually doing all the work or they're only the comic relief, movies, TV, and video games are loaded with animals, and the panda is no exception. So let's talk about where we most commonly see pandas, not in nature, but on TV, movies, and video games. Right, Paul. Uh, So my favorite thing in the world is always, as usual, video games. And the one place I always see pandas in video games, lately at least, is in my favorite video game, World of Warcraft. Uh, So there was was an expansion back in 2012 that was called Mists of Pandaria, and we had a bunch of big anthropomorphic giant pandas that you could run around and kill stuff with. Okay, cool. Was it... (laughs) Now, I thought I'd read... um, that that was it originally was like a an April Fool's thing like hey we're gonna come out with pandas and everybody they expected everybody to go no don't do that and then everybody was like oh pandas cool well that's I, what I read is that is there anything true any truth to that yeah so originally there in the original Warcraft RTS there was a, a race that you could interact with called you know of, of Pandarians and um you know, they were just kind of this cool, like, uh, little side thing that was in the game. They weren't, like, a playable race or anything like that. And people thought they were pretty cool. Like, they, they uh, had, like, a cool look to them. Like, they had, like, this sort of uh, Asian aesthetic that kind of was, like, a throwback to old, older Asian culture that was really neat to see in a video game. Later on, they did they had a habit of doing these April Fool's jokes every year of showing... Um, like something that they could add in like one year it was like a guitar hero type uh, play mode and stuff like that there was one year where it was uh, indeed a uh, pandarian that they were showing and instead of everyone being like wow uh, everyone was like whoa cool really you should really do it <laughs> yeah so yeah that, that is pretty accurate but yeah it, it was a uh, it was a cool addition and the monk race that they or monk class that they added with it was pretty cool but that was my probably least favorite expansion Kind of a little bit of good with a little bit of bad, right? A little bit of yin yang there. I play Heroes of the Storm occasionally, so that's the only reason I'm familiar at all with anything World right. of Warcraft related. And so in that game, there's uh, Lily, right? And, and, and who's the other? Don't they have Chen Stormstout? There you go. Yeah, there's Chen. a there's a there's a if you play the Horde side, there's a quest in the Barrens where uh, I don't know if it's still there since they did the the revamp of the Barrens way back in the day, but. There used to be a quest in the Barrens where you'd pick up one of Chen's uh, kegs and you would have to, like, uh, track down some other of his stuff or whatever and give it to some guy in Ratchet, and it was pretty cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah. In, um, in Heroes, I think Lili is a healer and Chen is a tank. Yeah, sounds about right. Other pandas in pop culture, of course, the DreamWorks movie Kung Fu Panda. Right, uh, so I have to admit, I've actually never seen this movie. Oh, it's a good movie. Yeah, You'd be surprised have, how good it is. Didn't it have Jack Black doing one of the voices or something like that? Jack Black is the panda. Yeah. Um, Angelina Jolie is one of the characters. Dustin Hoffman is like the old grandmaster that has to train him and teach him. It's a good movie. Yeah, I love all those guys. I, I just, you know, never sat down and watched it. I don't know. 
it's one of those, it's the classic storyline where a guy who's sort of a schlub is the chosen one, you know, so for some like, reason. Yeah, so there's like a call to action. Uh, yeah, the call to action. He's the chosen one who's eventually going to save the bi- the village. Yeah, and then he has but, a mentor that helps him like go through the... <laughs> yeah, he's got the rigorous training, and he's yeah. not that good, and people around him are like, is this guy really the chosen one? And he has some little personal hang-ups that he has to overcome, right. but in, in the end, I don't want to spoil it for you. <laughs> no, it's a good movie. He he winds up being the chosen one, and he saves the day and saves the village. And of course, it's going to wind up like that. It's a kids' movie. They're not going to have him fail and die at the end. Well, why not? I, <laughs> I got you it. know what? Good question. <laughs> Teach these kids some reality. Yeah, this is real life, man. Sometimes you just fail and die. <laughs> <laughs> So one of the uh, tenets of the Varmints podcast is don't eat the endangered ones. Don't eat endangered animals. And um, even though pandas aren't endangered, as we said, they're protected. I mean, if we lived in a world where there was like a million pandas and there were, there, it was no problem to just hunt one and eat one, would you, would you eat one? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, I generally don't have any problems with the thought of eating a bear. So uh, yeah, I would, I would definitely eat a panda. Um, but... Even though they're not uh, endangered and they're vulnerable, that's enough in this uh, current universe that we live in for me to not eat them. Yeah, I feel the same way too. And even when people kill pandas now, occasionally when they when they hunt them and kill them, and in the past when they used to hunt them and kill them, uh, they didn't necessarily eat the panda. They used the uh, fur. Yeah. In fact, the, the ancient Sichuan people... I don't know if I pronounced that right either. Yeah, we we're not good at that other language. <laughs> <laughs> they they somehow used the fur to control their, uh, you know, so women when they were, uh, you know, having their time of the month. Yeah, I don't know if they the, used. I don't. Maybe they were using like panda fur tampons. I don't know. Yeah, I well, I would imagine it was probably just more of like a, a padding that they would use to soak up. The, like a pad. There you yeah, go. Yeah. And then they used panda urine to melt accidentally swallowed needles. I did hear about that, and I thought that was very weird. And I would just try to not swallow any needles ever because I don't want to be drinking panda urine. I have so many questions about that. (laughs) It must be. Was needle swallowing a problem? (laughs) (laughs) That's a good question. Was it a problem? So much of a problem that you had to figure out a method of of eliminating (laughs) the needle from your digestive system? And then who's, who's the guy that... That, that was like, let me drink this panda urine. Maybe that'll help. <laughs> <laughs> There's a way that the body gets rid of the needle so that you can actually recover the needle and clean it off and use it again. Oh, no. Well, I mean, you know, if that, if you needed that needle really bad, you don't have to drink panda pee. Yeah. Uh so many questions. So, I'm yeah, so But I'm no, so I would not eat pandas. <laughs> I, you know what? Actually, I if they were more common... I would probably eat them because they have a really clean diet, right? Right, yeah. It's very They're not out there eating dead things. No, it's just bamboo. Although just bamboo. When they're young, they eat a little bit of mom's poo. Oh yeah, and you know what? I had to knock off a half a point for that for the intelligence (laughs) thing. Yeah, so how intelligent would you say they are, Paul? If you Google are pandas smart or dumb, (laughs) you get like four hundred thousand results. Right. And there's people who will say that pandas are really, really smart, and pandas there are people that will say that pandas are really, really dumb. Yeah, so you can uh, you can get a little bit of the Google confirmation bias. Yes, mm-hmm. definitely. And I think that the difference seems to be that the people who think that pandas are really, really smart are talking about wild pandas, and the people that say that pandas are really, really dumb are talking about captive pandas in zoos. Right. So, um, I, I will on a scale of one to ten, probably give the the captive pandas like a one and a half, and the <sighs> wild pandas like a three, because yeah. they just don't seem that bright. Right, exactly. So all the things I've watched of both uh, live and captive pandas haven't made me feel like they were actually particularly that intelligent. And uh, given the calorie requirements to have a really high functioning, intelligent brain. And the fact that it's hard to get those calories from bamboo. In fact, you have to eat so much that you crap 40 times a day. <laughs> um, I'm going to go ahead and say just generally pandas are probably a two. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's about what I have, too. Like, yeah. if you average it out, they're about a two. Right, right. I am going to go ahead and say that, just as a final thought, um, and I'm not trying to be edgy, I'm not trying to be any kind of, you know, I'm not trying to make anybody mad. I like pandas just fine. I don't think anybody should shoot them. I don't think anybody should mistreat them. But I think they probably should be extinct. Um, you know, the ones that are left over, the ones that are in zoos, the ones that are in the wild, you know, treat them well, make sure they're alive, make, you know, if, if they breed, if they make more little pandas, great, but stop dumping so much conservation money into these things, you know? Yeah, I think, uh, if you, if you're talking specifically about the money, I do think that there's probably better uses for the money. Um, but I think... Uh, China is kind of kind of coming from the point of view of like this is a national symbol and we're trying to preserve a national symbol, right? Because I imagine what America would be like if uh, bald eagles were about to go extinct. We'd be dumping all sorts of money into it. So um, I, what I'm saying is I understand what they're doing, but I, I probably think that there would be better uh, places to put that money. But the guys that are there take care of them. Um, Maybe don't spend so much effort in trying to get them to mate, like making panda porn for them and stuff like oh, that. <laughs> I read about that yeah. panda porn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's also why I rated uh, captive pandas so low on the scale of intelligence is because they've, in zoos, people will show them panda porn and they still can't figure out how to make yeah, babies. They even they even give them Viagra and it still doesn't, they still don't, uh, you know, mate. <laughs> that's crazy a 15 year old kid who lives in the south and it probably listens to like a lot of insane clown posse music and you know sits in his basement all day and makes cruel youtube and twitter comments that guy knows how to make babies we don't want him to make babies but he knows how to make babies pandas haven't figured it out all right right yeah but yeah well that's why I mean, that's why there are two on that scale man and, uh, you know, I understand China's thing. Hey, they're our national symbol. We have to protect them. We have to keep them safe. Well, don't build iPad factories all over their forests, you know? <laughs> right. You should have thought You should have thought about that 100 years ago. Yeah, no one was thinking about that 100 years ago, though. We thought that the, the uh, Earth's bounty was endless and we'd be able to just keep uh, taking everything and not having to pay any consequences for it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Right. And like I say, I like pandas. I like them just fine. They're they're <laughs> cute and fluffy, and and the the all the pandas that are living should keep living, and I hope they do. But you know, I mean, they're kind of like beyond repair, right? Right. I, yeah, I think the ones in the wild are coming back a little bit, but still. Yeah, they, we may have gone too far with pandas, and maybe we should just uh, focus on conserving the environment around them rather than them themselves. I agree. I thought you were going to take a lot more issue with that. No, no. I, it turns out we actually are on the same page there. I, I keep thinking that we're going to have really different ideas about these things, Paul. And it <laughs> seems like uh, we're kind of birds of a feather in more ways <laughs> than I expected. Do you have anything else for pandas this week? No, nah, I'm just I'm kind of getting a little bit hungry. I think uh, I think maybe I'm going to go for some Panda Express. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. Uh, the varmints podcast is produced by me paul chomo and you paul wilk yeah technical support is uh, provided by matthew chomo and me paul wilk and all the music you're listening to is by kevin mcleod yeah if you go to blazing studios.com you can get all the links to the audio in our show notes and we are on twitter and instagram at varmints podcast all one word subscribe to blazing caribou's studios youtube channel where you can watch artist and podcaster phil rude draw the animal we're talking about this week he did an amazing uh, panda that looked a little bit like a sad panda to me uh and i think you guys will enjoy it go check it out and as always we are at varmints podcast at gmail.com for your questions comments stories and suggestions this week's animal was suggested to us by faithful listener bonnie who listens every week she's been with us since episode one yeah thanks bonnie so we don't mention it very often but uh We would love it if you would take the time to leave us a nice review on Stitcher, iTunes, or wherever you get your podcasts from. And thanks once again for listening, and until next time, be nice to animals. Bye! You've been listening to a Blazing Caribou Studios production. Support and subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash blazingcariboustudios. Any one of you
you lily-livered, bow-legged varmints care to slap leather with me? In case any of you get any ideas, you better know who you're dealing with. I'm the hootinest, tootinest, shootinest, bobtail wildcat in the West. I'm the fastest gun north, south, east, and west of the Pecos. I'm the 